Happy sunny Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting May 18th, 2015. By the way, this week's episode will be slightly shorter since I only had three daily security bites. But let's jump right in and look at those daily bites now. Monday's story is some plain hacking drama. Last month, right before RSA, a security researcher, Chris Roberts, was detained from a United flight for a seemingly joking tweet he made. Essentially, he joked about whether or not he should use the flight's in-flight entertainment system to hijack this plane. At the time, many believed that this was an overreaction by the FBI and United. Not only did they remove him from his flight, but they actually banned him from all future United flights. However, this week there's new news on the story. Apparently, the FBI had a warrant for Roberts based on this unauthorized security research he's been doing since 2011. Essentially, he's been opening a panel on many flights on Boeing and Airbus planes and using a, a specialized Ethernet cable to monitor traffic. And in one case, there's claims that he gained access to in-flight systems that allowed him to change speeds in one engine and essentially make the plane climb and go sideways. Now, some of these claims may be overstated. There doesn't seem to be any sort of evidence showing he really had control of a plane. Nonetheless, he's been doing some irresponsible research. I'm all for security research. I'm all for researchers penetration testing systems. But when they're testing production systems, especially a plane where lives are at stake, you cannot be doing these sorts of unauthorized tests. They could be dangerous. So this is really irresponsible research if it is indeed true. So while I'm all for full disclosure, I don't think any researcher should do these sorts of tests on live plane. In any case, this is an interesting story. We'll see how this drama unfolds. But if you're a penetration tester, be sure to get the permission of the systems you're trying to test against and or just buy these systems yourself and test them in a lab environment. Thursday's news is a logjam, a new cryptographic vulnerability. Logjam was discovered by various university researchers, and essentially it's a flaw in the Diffie-Hellman key negotiation. This is a negotiation that many different uh, cryptographic uh, standards use to set up a secret key over a public connection. For instance, secure websites use it, uh, secure email servers, IPsec VPN uses it, and many other TLS negotiations use Diffie-Hellman to set up this secret key. Essentially, these researchers found a flaw that's very similar to Freak, except that it affects Diffie-Hellman. If a man-in-the-middle attacker can get between you and a, a server you're negotiating a key with, they can force you to use a weaker grade encryption, specifically DHE export ciphers. If you remember back with Freak, uh, the US government used to have regulations that forced weaker cryptographic keys to certain nation states that we weren't friendly with. And this is the DHE export cipher group. Group. Uh, essentially, many different products still support these ciphers. If you do, if you're allowing use of this cipher and a bad guy can get between you and the person you're trying to secretly talk to, they may be able to crack a 512-bit key and gain access to your communication. In fact, the researchers also mentioned that nation states can likely even crack a 1,024-bit key as well. So what should you do about this? First of all, if you use any uh, web servers, email servers, SHH servers that use the DHE export cipher, you should disable it. That should protect you. Furthermore, you might want to make sure that you're forcing it to generate 2048-bit keys, which are much harder to crack. Now, if you're a WatchGuard customer, you're probably also wondering if you're vulnerable to this. And the good news is, for the most part, our customers are not vulnerable to this logjam flaw. Our XDM and XCS appliances do not use the DHE export cipher, so you don't have to worry about about this flaw. That said, if you do have an SSL VPN appliance, we do allow use of the DHE export cipher. But there are mitigations. You can actually restrict access to the administrative user interface so that people can't access it from the internet. Be sure to see the blog post that talks about this. Finally, our XTM appliance can actually help protect you against this. Most browsers could be vulnerable to this because they may use the DHE export cipher. The only browser that's been patched so far is Internet Explorer. But if you 
have Firefox or Chrome, you're still waiting for a patch to fix the logjam flaw. The good news is if you're using WatchGuard's HTTPS application layer gateway, the thing we use to, to uh, secure HTTPS connections, our HTTPS proxy does not allow the use of the DHE export cipher. So even if you're using a vulnerable browser, if you're behind a WatchGuard XTM appliance that uses the HTTPS proxy, you're safe from this vulnerability. In any case, if you use any cryptographic products, chances are you're using Diffie-Hellman in the key negotiation, so be sure to go and disable the DHE export cipher. And if you date online, you're going to want to know about Friday's security news. According to many reports, an online dating site, or more specifically an adult dating site called Adult Friend Finder, has suffered from a security breach and has lost around 4 million customers' private information. Things like their email address, their zip code, perhaps payment information, and a whole bunch of other sensitive information about their gender and sexual preferences. Now this news comes from a researcher who kind of researches the dark web. Uh, she found a particular Tor website that included 15 Excel files that had the dump information for all these users of Adult Friend Finder. And it turns out that uh, this dump may be coming from a Thailand-based hacker who's trying to get revenge and extort Adult Friend Finder. In any case, if you are a customer of Adult Friend Finder, there's a chance that your email address and a whole bunch of your other very sensitive information, including your desire to have extramarital affairs, may be in the hands of these hackers and have actually gone public. So what should you do about this? Well, of course, if you're a member of this particular online dating site, you definitely need to change your password immediately. And frankly, again, if you use passwords on websites, make sure there are different passwords everywhere. Because when these sorts of dumps happen, sometimes your password can be reused in other sorts of attacks. On top of that, if you're curious whether or not you're affected by this, you might want to go to Have I Been Pwned? Dot com, and Pwned is spelled P-W-N-E-D. This is a particular website that takes all the leaked databases and many of the big breaches and uh, uses them to check your email address against the database. Now, I will have to admit, putting your email address in a public site like this does have its own risk, but I believe HaveIBeenPwned.com is a legitimate site. And if you put your email address there, it will tell you if it has been leaked in any of the big breaches, including this adult friend finder breach. So again, if you're a member of that site, you should definitely change your credentials. And really, this is something to think about as you continue to post private information online. Do you realize the third parties you're sharing this data with may not have perfect security? So don't post anything you don't want people to see in the future. That's it for this week's episode, folks. I hope you found something interesting and maybe implemented some some mitigations for things like logjam. As always, there's a lot of other security stories every week, and if you want to check those out, I recommend you visit our blog at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. The blog post associated with this video has a reference section with links to all those other stories. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And finally, if you want the videos quickly, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get them right away. Anyways, as always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.